All right, welcome back to Rogue Tech, and welcome back to your first playthrough. We are ready to start looking at and building and upgrading the three mechs we have that we will be able to drop at some point very quickly. Uh, I'm actually going to start with the stealth, because the stealth already has some electronic warfare, and is pretty good as a punchy boy. But, if we're punching with it, we don't care about jump jets. Because if we're, if we're always trying to run up and punch, the jump jets are not super interesting. So, dropping all of the jump jets is zero days. Mask... It's debatable whether or not it's worth the 2.25 tons, again with the understanding that you're going to be punching, because it can give you that extra distance to get in punch range for the next round. But is that worth 2.25 tons? That's entirely up to you to decide. But the main reason I'm jumping into the stealth first is because we got this really cool thing. So we're running a 315 core, which is quite hefty in the stealth. You know what else we have? A gyro XL that apparently saves tonnage based on the engine core size. So if we drop this gyro XL into this stealth, we go from about 41 to about 38. So we've saved three tons on a 45 ton mech. That is wonderful. That is so incredibly wonderful. And we don't have an armor upgrade yet. Yeah, Duralast Quick Sell. Okay. We are going to be running into melee and punching things. This, while it does make our armor heavier, this is a punchy boy. We're not going to use the extra tonnage we get from the XL Gyro and the XL Engine to have more boom room, we're going to use it to have more durability. And we're also going to upgrade our front armor, as well as, hopefully, if my mental math works out, our back armor. All right. So, before we do anything else, just with this hypothetical build, we're still able to run up and punch people just as well as we were before. Not able to jump, but who cares. We now have 5% damage reduction, period, all the time, just 5% damage reduction. And this does apply whether being shot from the front, from the back, from the side, doesn't matter. Unlike cover or braced, which is only from the front, this also makes your rear armor more effective. So what's really cool about that, in part, is we don't have to worry quite so much about turning our back to the enemies to get a good punch on somebody's back, for example. So that's really neat. And what this also allows us to do is, if you remember, we got this B-Pod bolt-on. So we're going to do that. All right, uh, Duralast Quick Cell does not have case built in, which means ammo explosion is still a concern, but we don't have to worry about through armor crits. That said, I would very much like to consolidate to have less separate ammo bins. And in order to do that, I think we are going to drop the SRM-6 and the Streak-2, along with the Streak-2 ammo. And we are going to put the ammo in the leg, put the Beagle Probe in the other side torso. Ah, the Duralast Quick... Okay, so this is, this is something else I haven't addressed yet. So, as you can see, the Endo Steel, it's just kind of all over the place. That's because the 14 fixed slots that it has are not restricted to one particular location. That's why it has, we have five slots of endo in one arm, four slots in another, nothing in the left torso. Because the endo steel slots can just slide around wherever they fit. As long as you have enough total slots, you're fine. But this Duralast quick cell armor takes specifically one slot in each location. 
So in exchange for that 5% damage reduction and immunity to through armor crits and damage, we are trading the ability to have a machine gun in the head. We're losing the quick sell Duralast left torso, or like the, the slot where I was planning on putting the SRM4 or SRM6 Valiant. Is that still worth it? Because remember, we're also paying extra tonnage. Or is it more interesting for us to go for the glazed armor for the reasons I mentioned in the actual, uh, in the salvage screen? And I think it is. I, I think the biggest advantage to not having through armor crits from the Duralast armor, the biggest advantage to that was our ammo not having a chance of exploding until our armor in that location was completely and totally depleted. depleted. Whereas glazed armor has case. So now if the leg ammo explodes, it will just destroy that leg. In addition to that, we do still have 30% damage reduction from energy-based attacks. We just take extra from Ballistic and Missile. Which we can use that understanding and that knowledge to be aware that if we do put our back to enemies, we want to make sure we're putting our back to enemies that have energy weapons instead of Ballistic and Missile weapons. Because again, those damage increases and decreases also apply to back armor. But, again, I don't think I'm going to use the Clan XL here. Because while it would be very, very bad if we did get backstruck and lose a side torso, we're going to try not to. We're going to try really hard not to. And the reason I'm stacking up all these uh, weapon systems and components on the left is specifically for the shield side discussion that I mentioned last time. So, we're keeping our least valuable assets on one side of the mech, and putting our most valuable assets on the other side of the mech. What this means is, if we're getting kind of shredded across the entire front, we can torso twist to take the majority of any additional damage we take on the right side. Now, with the XL engine, that is still kind of risky. You never truly have a shield side if you have an XL engine, because again, if we lose the right torso, we lose the mech. However, as far as crits go, if we're taking crits to the side, we can potentially buffer it up by, say, putting the mask over there. Which then allows the mask to potentially soak crits that the engine or the weapons would otherwise take. Also, having the ammo on the same side as the more valuable components that we want to protect means that we can comfortably keep our right to the enemies, and if our right leg gets opened, we don't have to care. Now then, um, we are out of missile hardpoints. I would love to put the SRM-4 Valiant in as well, but it's fine. Uh, we do have... Oh man, the AP Gauss Rifle would be really nice here. Just the AP Gauss Rifle in the head. Hmm. But unfortunately, we cannot. So what we can do is we can put the machine gun in the head. And we would need at least a half bin of machine gun ammo, uh, etc. Yeah, etc. And I don't think the tracer ammo is worth the half ton. Because there's no way we deplete an entire 400 shots with the machine gun. And so this would be super overkill as far as, you know, how much ammo we're carrying for the one machine gun. But that does, again, give us more crit chance. More damage instances that can crit. And you can see, we still have uh, 3.2 tons left. And that immediately brings me to the other thing that I know we have sitting around in here. The Guardian ECM. So remember, Guardian ECMs are really solid protection from distance as you're closing with the enemies. But if you're able to position a mech where it's hitting all of the enemies that are on the board with the active ECM, you're making it easier to hit them as well as making it harder for them to hit anyone on your team. Which is part of the reason why I'm preferring the Guardian ECM over the Warfare Suite. Because the Warfare Suite would just give less protection for this stealth. 
which is, as you can see, getting very valuable. And in addition to the, you know, reduced, <laughs> the reduced protection, it also doesn't scramble enemies as much as the active Guardian ECM. However, what the Warfare Suite Quick Cell does do really well is it also gives allies nearby protection. So, yeah. Guardian ECM, very good at either protecting the mech it's on or scrambling the enemies really well. Warfare Suite is best for protecting allies around whoever's carrying it. So we're definitely going to put the Warfare Suite on probably the Phoenix Hawk, honestly. Um, but we'll, we'll get there. For now, we're definitely putting the Guardian ECM in the stealth. And part of the reason I'm putting it center torso is because we don't have a support weapon, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, no, we don't have a support weapon to use. So we can't use the support hard point. And having one extra thing in the center torso that could be crit instead of the engine is, you know, good. Uh, also, instead of the double heat sink kit getting crit or the gyro XL getting crit. Good. Good stuff. Now we have 2.2 ton. Yeah, 2.2 tons left. We are maxed out on armor. We have all sorts of fun stuff that we're using. So what are we going to do with that? Well, you see this snub nose PPC right here? I want to fit it. I, I really want to fit it. And so we're going to drop the medium laser from the left torso. And we're going to put in the snub. And you can see now we're at 2.8 over our allotment of tonnage. So, that's the tricky part. 2.8 tons. Now, we could drop the, the, the machine gun. We could very easily drop the machine gun. And that would be 0.75, but that wouldn't get us where we want to go. Oh no, actually it would be one full ton, but it, it wouldn't get us where we want to go. We could also downgrade the SRM-6 Valiant, which is 3 tons, into an SR4, SRM-4 Valiant, which is 2. So that would save us 1 ton. Not great, honestly. Not, not ideal. But again, we have this mask, which is 2.25 tons. And we're not going to use it any time we're punching. And... Remember if you do if you if you recall the biggest thing that I said the biggest downside that I mentioned to using a mask is if you have ammo in the legs and your mask crits the ammo can explode from that which means if we ever use the mask with anything but a 0% fail chance or if we forget that it's on when we go to punch, in which case, again, we're not benefiting from it at all. But if we forget to turn it off, and it ex like it crits, and it causes either the machine gun ammo or the SRM ammo to explode, yes, we have case from the glazed armor, but we still lose our leg. We fall to the ground. This triggers when you move. I'm pretty sure it triggers before the melee attack goes off, which means we actually lose our entire alpha strike as well. So, that's why I'm dropping the mask. And now we have the SRM-6 Valiant, the SRM-4 Valiant, the machine gun, all the ammo we need, and we have this lovely snub nose PPC. Oh, also the Guardian ECM, we also added that in. The snub nose PPC, first of all, has no minimum range so we can run up and punch somebody in the back and then hit them point blank with a 60 damage pinpoint ppc shot the second thing to note is it does have damage fall off but it also has 780 meter max range and if you'll remember we replaced a medium laser that does 25 damage at up to 360 meters so even if we're not able to close into melee range immediately we're still able to shoot at 780 meters to do up to 30 damage. And then here's the final and most important part of this. PPCs, when you hit an enemy, jam their ECM. So again, the idea here is this mech is gonna run into the enemy formation, punch somebody in the back, have the Guardian ECM active to scramble everyone, 
whoever he hits, if they don't die from it, stays scrambled and becomes even more scrambled because of the PPC. And we can even fire off the beta pod at whatever point is most advantageous. This is a scary, scary, short-range, in-your-face, close-up brawler. And I love it. Now, we need 0.5 tons. Well, 0.55. Again, we could drop the SRM-6 to an SRM-4, but I think instead... Huh, actually, hold on, hold on, hold on. Six dynamic slots. So we would need to free up two slots anywhere. But if we freed up two slots... We could also have stealth. Not great stealth. Stealth X is, you know, not the best. It's actually arguably one of the worst as far as the protection it offers. And stealth, again, we're, we're going to be doing close range brawling with this mech rather than long range or anything where stealth is most effective because you can see um, I can't really gesture with the mouse because obviously I have to hover to get the tooltip up. But it says... 80% sensor stealth signature reduction, one sensor's check penalty, which means the enemy has a much, much harder time getting sensors and not having the no sensors debuff, which also applies at short range, but harder to hit by one at medium range, two at long range, and three at extreme range. So if the enemy's firing near their max range, we're getting essentially three extra evasion so that's pretty cool the downside of course being that stealth systems generate extra heat so that's something we would need to pay attention to because uh yeah we are especially with the ppc we're getting there <laughs> we're, we're getting towards our heat delta and actually right now if we fire the machine guns times six that would be an extra two heat that's not shown here so we would only have a heat delta of minus two. In a hot biome, that means we would generate heat every turn without the stealth. But here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm thinking. We would need two slots in the mech to use the stealth X. We could either drop the medium laser and drop the SRM-6 into an SRM-4, which would save us two tons, bringing us under the max, giving us the stealth, and also allowing us to bring an extra engine heat sink. Or we can just drop the machine guns and the half bin of ammo. We would need to still shave off 0.55 tons from somewhere, but we would then have the stealth and not the extra heat sink. Because the engine heat sink plus one would be an extra six cooling. And the B pod actually. Mm, actually, hold on. The B pod can explode until we use it. It is volatile, so it rolls twice to explode if it gets crit. Meanwhile, the Stealth X, if we lose any location, I'm pretty sure... No, wait, 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 no. Stealth X, because it's a specialist slot item, I don't think... I don't think we lose it unless it gets crit or that location gets destroyed. Alternatively, we could also drop the machine gun, the machine gun ammo, and the medium laser still. That would be way more cooling than we need. Or we can rely on the snub and the punches to open the enemy up and then follow up with more crit. So I think actually, even though it takes two slots, ah, uh, no, 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 because we need to get two slots back. So yeah, dropping the medium laser is not adequate. Yeah, I think, I think our best option is dropping the machine gun. That gives us the two slots for the Stealth X. Boom. 
it is showing it in specific places. So, the Stealth X, you see it's a reserve slot in each side torso, each leg, and each arm. Which means, if we lose any location, if, if our arm, either arm gets blown off, or either leg gets blown off at all, the Stealth X takes a crit, and since Stealth X is a single slot, it gets destroyed. So, it makes it harder for them to hit us, which is really good, especially if we are exposing our back at any point to the enemies. Really good. We have a bunch of crit with the SRMs, so we have 10 SRMs that each have double crit chance compared to regular SRMs. We still have the medium laser and the snubnose PPC to do 85 pinpoint before the SRMs fire off. I'm happy with it. We have a we have a little punchy boy, and we still have 2.5 slots of, or 2.5 tons of carry weight, which means if we get a combat shield or if we get a weapon, a melee weapon, we can make this into a legitimate bona fide melee mech. But for right now, it's already a good enough melee mech. It, it definitely is able to punch reliably. It is definitely able to shoot every weapon while it is punching. It's quite maneuverable, so it's able to get into melee range pretty quickly. And it's got a lot of uh, crit chance once you actually open them up. And then the stealth is just extra icing on the cake to protect what we've got going on here. And then we look at heat, and we see we have a heat delta of minus 6. Now, it is worth noting you don't want your melee mechs to ever run hot ever because if they are running hot you will lose mobility and if you lose mobility they can't get in punch range as easily but that's less of a concern until we actually get a melee weapon because if i remember correctly right now our melee is like 40 damage twice still respectable very much very much respectable for a 45 ton mech Regardless, it's not catastrophic if we can't punch. We still have a decent weapon loadout. Ooh, actually, hold on. We have a clan ER small. So, here's a great example of a use case for clan weapons and clan technology. Our medium laser. Our medium laser is 25 damage at 360 meters. The clan ER small laser is 20 damage at 400 meters. So we gain 40 meters of range in exchange for five damage and a little bit of stability. 1.25 goes down to one. We also save one heat. So we're generating one less heat and we save half a ton, which means we're losing 0.25 stability and five damage to extend our range, reduce our tonnage, and reduce our heat all at once. So we absolutely do that. That is how we get the 0.55 down to 44, which then allows us to put the engine heat sink plus one. Even if we're getting hit by heat damage, this thing will be fine. We will be completely fine soaking heat damage. And any biome Unless we're taking heat damage, we will be able to alpha strike every single turn without fail. Because we have a heat delta of minus 13. And again, we're doing that with stealth. So you have to keep in mind, the stealth weapons... Actually, let me just demonstrate. So, right now, heat efficiency shows alpha strike, 53 heat, heat delta, minus 13. If we drop the stealth, it shows... Alpha Strike 53, Heat Delta, minus 13. It does not notice, it does not pay attention to the Stealth X. It is showing the same amount of Alpha Strike and Heat Delta, despite the Stealth X, increasing our heat from Weapons Fire by 6%, and increasing our heat, by ter heat per turn by 6. Now... We are cooling 66, so that means the extra 6 heat per turn from the Stealth X is offset by the heat sink plus 1. And the 60 heat per turn cooling is adequate for the 
53 heat plus 6% per turn. Alpha striking with everything, even in a hot biome. Because, again, without the heat sink, we're at 60 cooling and 53 plus 6%. 10% is 5, so 6% is like 2.7 or so. Which means, even in a warm biome, like the ones we've been dropping in, we're still going to be about heat neutral. While running stealth, while running a snub nose PPC, good times all around. And this is a very, very well optimized build. We also have a little bit of a shield side, kind of, not really until we put a clan XL in it, if we ever do. But this is a reliable, beautiful build that, most importantly, whenever we uh, do get a melee weapon of some kind, we still have 2.5 tons of carry weight. So if we do get a 2-ton sword or whatever, 2-ton combat shield, we can add that in and make this mech even better. I think I would rather have the better sensors and put the plus 1 gunnery on something that has jam chance. That's it, final answer. So, for a mere 186.5 thousand sea bills, our stealth is now done until we get some kind of melee weapon. And we're already at an hour, so I'm gonna go to the Bushwhacker, do exactly what I just said. Wait, the Bushwhacker doesn't have a jam chance on anything. Never mind then. <laughs> Disregard, um. Uh... Yeah, uh, then again, ooh. No, no, it's not It's not fast enough to get in close range and use the ultralight rotor rifle. So, we're going to call it there, I think. And next, tomorrow, we're going to handle the Phoenix Hawk and the Assassin. And then we're going to distribute our repair days to drop on missions sooner than later, and... We're still sitting pretty at 2.2 million C bills with 21 days still left in this financial report. So yeah, for now, this has been your episode of Rogue Tech for the day. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, have a good one.